Hey folks, welcome back to the Beer Wrench Garage, and today uh, we're going to determine the path forward with uh, this 2004 Audi All-Road. Um, if you haven't been following along, I'm going to leave some links to some videos on uh, um, how I got this car and what we've done to it. Uh, but it's become clear that the motor has to come out. Uh, both turbos are leaking, but the passenger side turbo, uh, one of the oil lines is just absolutely gushing uh, oil, and it's not going to... Uh, there's just no way to continue to drive it um, with, with that much of uh, oil loss. So, unfortunately, to get to these turbos, the engine has to come out. And so, uh, at this point, I'm going to determine just how far we're going to go with this. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a compression check to uh, see the overall health of the interior of the engine, see really how it holds compression. Uh, if it turns out to be pretty good, what we'll do is we'll pull the engine and transmission, uh, replace the turbo lines or address the turbo lines and whatever else needs to be done, anything leaking. Uh, throw some new mounts, transmission and engine mounts on there, uh, and perhaps do a clutch job and put it back in and get it into tip-top uh, running condition. If it turns out the, the compression check low shows some low numbers or inconsistent numbers, then at that point uh, we're going to delve into a full rebuild where we'll strip the block, do bearings, rings, and uh, all that. So, all right, guys, let's dig into it and see what uh, the health of this engine looks like before we decide uh, which direction to go. So, as with pretty much any modern fuel injected car, to do a compression test, we're going to have to uh, disable the uh, fuel delivery so we can crank the engine for a compression test without flooding the uh, combustion chambers with fuel. And the way to do that on, on this car is to pull. Uh, the fuel pump fuse, which lives here. All right. And is this 20 amp fuse in slot 28. So we'll pull that. And we'll go ahead and uh, Start the vehicle, let it run till uh, the fuel pump quits delivering fuel to the engine and it'll die. At that point, uh, you know that you can start pulling your plugs out and running the compression chip. All right. Good. We don't even sometimes when you pull that fuse, the car will start and run with the uh, fuel that's remaining in the system. But just not enough in this car to start it. And we know that the fuel pump has been disabled, so uh, we'll be able to crank the uh, motor pretty good. All right, so let's get it ready for the compression test. And so for a compression test, we're just going to use uh, the tried and true OTC compression tester kit, which consists of your gauge and uh, a couple of different fittings to uh, screw into common uh, spark plug holes. Um, so what we'll do is go in and take this to the car, pull the plugs, obviously the ignition coils and plugs out, and then screw this into each cylinder and go uh, through and, and uh, crank the car six to eight times and then read our results. So I'll show you how that works. Let me go ahead and uh, pull the plugs and I'll come right back. All right, folks, so excuse the wind. Hope you can hear me and hope you can see this pretty decently. I got the compression kit, test kit open. Um, I've took all the ignition coils right here out, off of the cylinders. I took the spark plug out of this first cylinder here left the other ones in just because it's kind of windy day we're outside and I don't want any junk to get into the engine. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that uh, my fitting it aligns to my spark plug. So I'm going to take the threads on the plug and match them up to the fitting. And they do. And in that case, I can go ahead and screw the fitting in to the spark plug hole, just like I would be putting in a spark plug. I'm just going to put it in hand tight 
Don't need to crank down on it. Once it stops turning, I know I'm good. Next thing I'm gonna do is come at, come over here, grab my gauge. At this point, I can take the kit and uh, set it out to the side because we got what we need for the test. And the gauge is just a regular kind of air fitting. We'll just hook it into the uh, uh, hook it into the fitting that's in the engine and then I'm going to go ahead and crank the car for this cylinder. Now I'm not sure how the cylinders are numbered but I've made myself a chart and I'm going to treat this passenger side first one as number one and then two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to take two readings for each cylinder so it gives us uh, um, kind of a uh, average or whatever so I don't have like a fluke and then uh, when I go inside, I'm going to crank the engine six to eight rotations. And whatever number that needle goes up to is going to be our compression reading. All right, so let's cross our fingers. Ideally, we're looking for a number between 150 to 200. But uh, as long as it's in that range, what we're really looking for is consistency between all the cylinders. You don't want one to be like 140 and the other to be like 190. Um, so let's see what we get. All right, that was uh, first cylinder, and we're right at uh, 170. Okay, we'll release the pressure and try it again. And again, right on the dot at 170. So for our chart, we can do 170 and 170, okay? Now what I'll do is release the pressure, release the uh, fitting, and then uh, return the spark plug back into that cylinder, remove the cylinder, the spark plug for the next cylinder, and then so on and so forth. So fitting is out. plug is back in and we'll take the plug out for the next cylinder and repeat the process. All right, fitting is in, gauge is on and off we go. Excellent. So we're right about, I would say, 172 on that one. Just a hair over 170. We'll release and do it again. Same result, 172. Just a hair over 170. All right, we'll move on to the third cylinder. All right, third cylinder coming up. All right, right on the money. I would say it's 169. So just keep it, keeping it an even number, we'll say 168. Run that one more time. Same result, just under 170 and we'll say 168. So that bank right there on the passenger side 
that bank right there on the passenger side looks pretty doggone good and that's that's great so we're off to a good start if we can get similar results on that side we'll be real good but let's not jump uh jump ahead of ourselves so i'm gonna put things back in here and then go to the next side and do the process over again all right the plug is out fitting is going to go in a little bit trickier because of the uh various hoses and pipes in the way but should be all right okay that looks like it's in pretty decent it looks like it's in pretty decent all right get our gauge on all right there's our gauge let's see if you guys can see that oh well you're gonna have to take my word for it i'm gonna show you the result even if you don't see it real time all right, first run for that fourth cylinder, the first one on the driver's side. All right, just under 160. Let's give it another whirl. Yeah. 158. All right, well, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't great. It wasn't the ideal number, but still um, more than within spec. All right, let's see what uh, the last couple here look like. All right, so now our fifth cylinder, or like, the, I don't know if it's cylinder five per se, but the fifth one we're doing. So let's get that over here. And let's give it a whirl. Yep. Just over 160, I'll call that 162. And we'll run it one more time on this one. It really doesn't want to stay. Yeah, this one's 160. All right. So we'll meditate 160 on the second try for that one. And then we will move on to our last cylinder. All right, folks, you gotta believe I'll show you the uh, results, if, even if you don't see it, because the gauge is uh, rotating away. All right, I just <laughs> let a little bit loose, so it's right around 164. So we'll let that out, try it again. So this is a 166, a little bit more stout. All right, let me uh, put this gauge away and then uh, let's look at the numbers and uh, make a determination. All right, folks. Well, so the really, really good news here is this is a healthy motor. Is it perfect? Is it like super strong? No, that uh, number four cylinder is just a teensy bit lower than what I would consider perfectly ideal but the spec for a motor and in general the rule of thumb is uh, as long as the lowest 
cylinder is within 10% of the highest cylinder, you are more than good. Some manufacturers like Ford even say 25%, which is crazy to me, but uh, if you're within that 10% rule of thumb, you're good. And in this case, the highest cylinder we had was cylinder number two at 172. Lowest we had was uh, cylinder four at 158. And 10% of 172 is 17 PSI. You add 17 PSI to 158 and you get 175. So uh, the lowest cylinder is within 8% of the highest cylinder. That is a healthy motor, which is some good news here. We, uh, we, uh, we'll go ahead and pull the, uh, the motor. We're gonna do the turbos, address the turbos, whether it just needs lines or needs new turbos or rebuild turbos. I'll determine that once I have the motor out. Uh, but at this point we can avoid a rebuild because this is running pretty well it's running pretty healthy and what that compression uh, test proved is the piston rings are in good condition and the valves are sealing and the head gasket is sealing so those are three kind of things uh, uh, question marks that you have on an old car and uh, we've ruled those out or, or at least we've uh, uh, the, the, those are, those at least we can say with a uh, certainty that those aren't any concerns right now I hope you enjoyed this update of the all road. Um, I will keep you updated as to how uh, addressing the turbos goes, but uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you like what you see, subscribe. More than welcome to check out our other videos of tool and car videos and more videos on this car. But otherwise, thank you and I'll see you on the next video.